Okay, so we are using golden fluid acrylics and we're gonna be starting with cerulean blue, primer yellow, naphthol red, I believe, titanium white, carbon black, and we have some green gold here. And I think I'm actually going to pick up some primary cyan. I'm gonna grab some of that, get that on my palette. And you know, I know I'm gonna need more white, so we're gonna go ahead and just get some more white on there. Okay, so let's start. Let's go ahead and start with that white. And I think I might grab a tiny bit of cerulean blue, just a tiny bit. Super light. It's not going to be a lot of change right now, but we just want to get some of that on there. At least get some paint covered in the sky. We could grab some more of that cerulean blue. Maybe we want to grab some primary cyan in there too. We could actually kind of go back and forth here, and this will kind of create that indication. of some blue sky, maybe way back in the distance. Let's get some more white over here. Okay, that's pretty good. There's not gonna be a lot, a lot more to do with the sky. I might grab some more of that primary cyan. Let's just get some of these blue spots be a little more rich, just a tad. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. Just got a cup of water over here. And dry off some of the moisture. Just got a paper towel over here. Pardon that, okay. Let's grab some more Primary cyan, we probably didn't need to wash the brush, we're just gonna grab the same colors actually. Primary cyan, some white, let's put some cerulean blue in there. We'll just kind of dull it back a little bit. That cyan's pretty bright. Grab some white. Okay, let's pick up a teeny tiny bit of black. Small amount. Come on, here we go. Just a little, just a little, okay. Now, you see we're using a half inch filbert brush and it's kind of lost its nice edge, but actually that works to our advantage because we're gonna use those hairs that are just kind of random and create some foliage, so maybe a tree line. So this is like a tree line. We're gonna put some fantastic blues, and we're gonna work our way all the way down to some bright color down in here. Oops, got some paint on there. Okay. So we're just gonna fill that in. Bring it down somewhere in here. Kind of feather that away. Not worried about the bottom edge, we're worried about that top edge. Let's pick up some more cyan. Grab some white. Now I want this to be brighter. See how that's just a tad brighter. That's a little bit brighter. Not a lot, enough to just notice the difference. And I'm painting it pretty thick today. Got some water in there. We want it to flow nice. Okay. Let's grab some more cyan and some more of that cerulean blue. This is going to be a lot richer. Very rich. I like it. Let's stick with it. See what happens. Woo! 
I love getting these rich blues. It's going to make things pop so well. It's really going to stand out against our warm colored foreground. Okay, that's about, about how far I want to go down with that. Let's pick up some white. Kind of get this color that we had over here. Just fill in some of that area right in the middle there. Okay. And just trying to cover that canvas. And the canvas we're using today is just a store-bought canvas from Blick. I use a lot of different types of canvas. And it's a medium texture. I added a layer of gesso, I did do that, and kind of wiped that off so it doesn't have a lot of texture, less than what it came with, so it's going to just help me blend that color a little better, little, little better. Okay. But you could use just a straight up store-bought canvas. A lot of my previous paintings, on, a, especially on the videos, have been just open them up and start painting. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting the moisture off of that. I'm going to need more white, so I'm going to grab more white. A whole lot. And let's grab some black. And let's put some black. Again, I probably didn't need to wash the brush again, but kind of using that same color. Now we're going to take some yellow, I think. Some more primary cyan. Just kind of feeling it up, seeing, you know, kind of comparing it with what the color, what I have here on the palette already, so I can kind of compare that before I apply it to the canvas. That white sure is running fast. Okay, so I like that. A little darker, a little more yellow. Let's just get that all in underneath there. Now, some of this paint is still wet. I'm going to try to blend it into there, kind of randomly. But I'm going to try to feather that in there as best I can. Now, if you run into this problem, that's not blending very well, is it? Oh, we can fix it. We can fix anything. Just take some primary sand, take those exact colors that we were using. Get a lot of that blue. Just kind of go right in between. Yeah, it's a lot easier to feather colors that way because that paint underneath is almost starting to dry already. And we don't need it to be perfectly smooth. This isn't the sky, this is trees, whatever kind of foliage, what have you. So we just want it to blend nicely, but we still like that texture. I like the texture. So it does have some textures, but I'm just kind of working it, feathering as best I can. Okay. Let's take that same darker color. Let's add some green gold to it, just for kicks. Just for kicks. Okay. Let's bring that through right there. Kind of fan it up right through here. A couple of random spots there, there. Kind of improvising. Perfect. Okay. Let's grab some white. Put that in the primary cyan, pick up some more yellow, more white. Want that to be brighter. Mm, a little bit brighter. Okay, that, that might work. That's kind of a teal color because we added that yellow. So it's not, I mean, it's kind of a muted down teal, greenish blue. Good in between. It's going to make it appear that the light is hitting it compared to over here because it's just, I got that hue. Is that correct? 
warm hue to it. Okay, I'm kind of mixing some of that color again. This is a little bit brighter. I don't know how far I want to go with this. It's not bad. Something not right about it. Maybe let's wash the brush. And I'm going to get more primary cyan. And I'm going to get more cerulean blue. Oh, I'm running out. Got it. Wash my brush. Okay. Let's kind of go back to this blue color. Revisit that. Primary cyan, I can't even remember what it was. Cerulean blue and white, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's a good match. Now, add more black, more blue. Ah. So now that's kind of a darker color. Same hue, just a little darker. This is going to help us blend into what we were working on down through here. We're kind of creating the indication of just some variety in the foliage, some tree lines, maybe some bumps, some draws, some mini miniature ridges through here. So now I'm just kind of fanning this together, leaving some of that warmer teal color. Keeping that a little darker down low. Okay. Now, let's grab some green gold. Let's go back to this pile over here. So we're going to grab some black, green, gold, and black. And we've got a little blue on that brush still. This is going to be pretty dark. It's not black yet. It's going to be dark, though. Woo! Yeah, she's strong. Okay. I like it. Now, a lot of these, when I first add a layer of paint here, you know, I'm not worried about the specific detail. I am drawing the ideas, painting the ideas of things being here. We can add detail over the top. Just, just worry about generally getting these ideas of trees, of just, I mean, foliage can be anything you want it to be. You gotta grow a certain way grow any way it wants to actually. So, be random. Kind of stick to the general theme of what you're after. Don't get caught up on details. You can work on that later. Okay. So I like that. I think it's going well. There's something not right about up here yet. I don't know. We'll, we're going to let this dry. We'll come back to that area. Let's focus more on the foreground. Now we're going to want to lay a base for what we're doing in the foreground. And I'm washing my brush over here. I'm going to dab that dry. Let's grab some green gold. Now think about what would be what would be the undermost layer if you had something that the sun was hitting down here. What would be underneath the most? Well, dirt, dirt would be down there. We don't quite have to go that deep. But we don't want to start with any highlights down here. Think about what's underneath the highlights. Maybe some green foliage. Okay. Maybe we'll take some red and some yellow and some black. Maybe there is some dirt that it's showing. Okay. We're going to paint some dirt. Maybe it'll be some more dirt over here. But the 
there's still some green. Got some primary cyan in that too. Grab some black, a lot of black. Oh, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, look how cool that is. See now that transition from that light blue above here down to this black, that's so dramatic. I think that is so cool. I always try to go for that dramatic effect. Yeah, let's put some right down in the corner too, just for the heck of it. Now, actually, how are, things are starting to pop out at me now. And what I mean by that is that I'm starting to see things, and I'm seeing what could be. This could be a tree here. could be a tree there. Some more trees through here. Now that I'm losing paint, I'm gonna go back to this blue. I'm just mixing some cerulean blue, some primary cyan. What I've realized is that I need some more blue through here. For sure through here. I don't know about anything else, I just know I need some blue through this area. I didn't like this white area, light area. I really don't know what I'm doing here yet. I'm just going with it. I'm going to always fix mistakes, but I have a good idea. I'm just kind of going with the flow, and I'll make changes as I go, as things come up. So just have a good time with it. Just paint whatever you feel. Okay. I left some white area. I think I know what you're, I think you know what I'm going to do here. Put some water in. I'm just kind of designing that stream right now. I'm going to take some black. Oh, that's powerful. Really cool, though. I like it. Okay, we're almost finished with that. I am going to wash my brush right now. Dab it off of my towel, paper towel I have over here. Okay, now let's get some white, some blue. Let's just fill that in. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what to do with this quite yet. So let's just fill it in with a general color. We've got some blues up in the sky, so that is going to be reflecting to some degree in the water. So we'll get that on there. And just scrub that up into here. Okay. And disappear up there. Washing my brush again. It's a good idea. I'm going to take a break here and let everything dry in a second. It's a good idea to make sure that you start with some fresh water after this first layer of paint. Just a good idea. Okay. Let's grab some white. I don't want to pick up green, so I'm going to try to avoid that green. That's not bad. Pick up some blue, primary blue, primary cyan. That's a little bit lighter. Just kind of fan that over the top, right up top there. And I'm going to take some more blue. Now this blue over here, especially down low, we want that to stand out from that other ridge. So we're getting a lot of blue, both colors of blue. Really rich. You can kind of get rid of it as you go higher, but I would like that to be really rich down low, especially down in, in the shadowed, shaded area down through here. 
And I want some of that blue to be over in here too. I'm starting to not like this, these light colors. I wanted it to be like meadows. Ah, I don't know, not working for me. I'm over it. Moving on. Some blue through here. Like I said, especially as we get into these shadows, just really dramatic when you do that. Some really bright blue. Okay, let's let it dry and we'll come back in a little bit. All right, so this is pretty much dry. And what we're gonna do now is, I think we're gonna refine some of these blues a little more. And I've been thinking about this area through here. That's one of the good reasons why I like to let things dry. It also gives me a chance to just kind of mull everything over. I'm gonna take some primary cyan. I'm gonna add some red. So that's gonna darken it down. And I might get some white and black. Just add a, a touch of gray into that mixture. I think what I want to do is darken some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and darken this whole area through here. We'll do some of this black. Go right above that though. Because I think we have the right colors back here. And so what's missing is I think we just need darker colors down in here. Leave that. Let's kind of kind of make those pop back there if we darken this as well. At some point I'm going to need to switch to a smaller brush. And it's getting really close to that time. Again, this is kind of laying the foundation. Not worried about specific details. Let's smooth some of that out. I'll take some more of that. Put it over in here. I think we're going to want to do the same thing. Again, I'm just adding some red to that primary cyan, and that's going to darken things dramatically. I'm kind of wondering. My hills need to be taller. I don't know yet. Maybe I want them to go off the page. Maybe that'll... Yeah, I might try that. So let's take the same color. Bring it all the way up. I'm going to bring it all the way up to the top here. I think that's going to add something here. There's a cliff. Keep it dark up here, but then as you get down into this area, we're going to take some cerulean blue. We're going to try to get this color through here. Probably some white is needed. That's better. Back to some of this darker color. This is why I don't add a lot of detail in the, from the start, because I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with everything.
Now that's not bad. I want to take a sponge, dip it in water. I think that's too high up there. Just kind of scrub that out. Now take the dry part of the sponge. Now pull that away. Make sure you wash your sponge afterwards so you preserve it. And I think I might get rid of that brush. And we'll switch to, well, let's switch to a flat brush. This is just, has a little more defined edge to it. It's gonna work better for me. Let's take some white, kind of clean up that spot real quick. And let's add that white to our blue mixture here. Try to match this color here. That'll work. Now bring that one up right to the corner. Kind of that swooping motion going up. I like that. Now we're going to grab more blue. Now I'm going to get more specific with the motions I'm trying to, to achieve. I'm going to try to get some, some actual pine trees now rather than just the ideas of pine trees. I'm going to start just poking at it like this. I know some of you don't like when I speed it up. It's really hard because I do spend a lot of time on my paintings and I think we might break some of them down into separate videos in the future, perhaps, but we might have to speed up some of this for now just to make it work. So this is all I do, real simple. Just refining what I have. We already have everything here. I just need to refine it. Okay. I'm going to wash the brush. You need to get a brush cam, a cup cam. Okay. Stick some black, green, gold, yellow. We'll just go with yellow then. Kind of losing that, running out. Add some blue, blue, white, yellow. Let me see how I can start really getting these trees defined. some more white to the mixture. That's too bright. Let's pick up some blue. Add some blue into that. It's a little more dull. That'll work. Just adding highlights. Tiny tree details. Tree right here. A couple more right there. And then what I'll have to do eventually, I do like picking up that liner brush. It's a number one liner. And I'm going to take some green gold, oh, some blue, get some white. We're going to want to get some bright colored green. I'm going to want to just add some highlights to these trees. Here's some grass right here. So using these little liner brushes, it doesn't matter if they get old and dingy. Just 
that size of that brush is the correct size. So even if it's all roughed up, you can still get it done. Now down below, I think I'll save for just a, a bit later here. So I'm going to set the foundation for what we're going to do down below. And just build up some small, subtle highlight details. And we're going to end up putting flowers down here, some wild flowers. Spring is here in Montana, and we're going to have a lot of really, really brilliant colored flowers on the mountains. I'm going to try to mimic that. And then, of course, we can take black. We can add shadows on the other side of these trees. Taking that black, Maybe shadows in some parts. I'm going to keep poking at all of this. see where I can take it. just want things to be a little more detailed. I want trees to really stand out on the horizon. And I want to increase some shadows down in the lower areas. And once I wrap up kind of this area through here, we'll work on the foreground and we might be close to finished to finishing this painting at that point. I'm gonna think about this river too. So I'll keep going. Might use a fatter brush for some of these areas. I just want to define these trees. We'll slope back down.
All right, so I'm pretty happy with what we have going on in the background. I haven't gone to the foreground quite yet, but basically I've been using the same color mixtures of blues, just working these blues over uh, very intensely back and forth, trying to really mainly smooth out some of these areas. I've darkened a couple of these ridges, kind of reshaped them a little bit. I'm um, thinking about doing something with the sky, just don't know yet. And I did add one more ridge with an even lighter color, just, just to push that back a little bit further. But I wanted to show you that just to show that it does take a lot of time of doing that same process. It really just comes down to a matter of how much work you're willing to put into it. So I um, wanted to show you that process. So now I'm come, kind of getting to the point where pretty happy with it, don't know how happy I am with it. So that's a good time to focus on the rest of the painting and kind of assess where you're at. So what I'm gonna do right now is I wanna define some of these trees more. And I've switched to a round brush. Uh, this one is a number two round brush. But anything medium size, something you can get a pretty good point on. And I'm gonna mix some of our blue with this yellow, kind of got a green tone going. And I'm looking at these silhouettes of these trees and I do have some highlights on some of these. I'm not really happy with them overall. And it's gonna take some experimenting with this as well, but just trying to decide how I want the shadows to look, where I want the highlights to be. And it's gonna be the same process with these trees of just poking at them over the course of, oh, maybe a half hour, maybe an hour. I'm just using the tip of that brush, just kind of tap on the details, just tap, 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 tap some highlights. And it is very tedious, must be patient with it. But it's just using this round brush, just tapping these highlights in. You really kind of have to go all over the place, back and forth, back and forth. When I start thinking about transitioning into this foreground, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to take some gray. You have to think about like grays, and there's some blue in there too. I've got a lot of black kind of in this area, and I want to leave some of that black, but this gray blue is also going to represent some details that are in the shadows. And those shadow details, it's going to add another layer, another dimension of realism. So it's important not to just stick on that black. You do have to be able to see through these shadows. There has to be something there, or else it is going to look very two-dimensional. So I'm adding detail in the shadows right now. It's really about just building up all these little textures. Might grab some more black. This is gonna be a little darker. I'm using the side of that brush. You could use a flat brush for this. I'm thinking about some rocks. I want to start to visualize the details of the, the foreground, what's gonna be sitting around here. Got some pretty thick paint for this. It's just kind of blocking these 
stones in right now, these boulders. And I can wash that, that color off the brush. Think about what highlights I might have. So I'm gonna grab some yellow and some red. We've got quite the mess going on here. Some yellow, red, some white. We're gonna create a tannish, peaches. We're trying to think of sunlight on the rock. And yeah, maybe we can grab some gray, add some gray, just tone it back a bit. There's a highlight there. I can just kind of pull that through the paint. Maybe just laying the foundation again. Doesn't have to be the final result. Kind of pulling it down using the side of the brush. Get creative with the angle. Experiment with all different types of angles with your brush. Try to figure out all the different ways that your brush could be used. It really comes in handy when you get to know your brushes. I don't think there's any one brush that I prefer over the other. I can do most of what I do with a lot of different brushes. And it just depends on how you get comfortable which brushes you do get comfortable with. I'm just thinking about highlights, little highlights back here. Just remaining patient, building these little details one step at a time. Some more rocks. And I'm going to wash my brush. Now we can get, maybe we can get a little more creative. Let's take a, this is a pretty beat up fan brush. But we can think about some foliage details. blue, kind of a greenish color. Sure, why not? Let's just tap it on there. Just add some texture. When it comes to making ground, foliage, leaves, grass, any texture is good texture. You can always adjust it, but I like to go very random. And cover things up if you don't like it. Sometimes I'll do this and then I get to a point where maybe I don't like a lot of it, but maybe there's a couple pieces that really did work out. Maybe I can kind of see the the end result of what I did in maybe one particular spot. So I'll cover up some of it and maybe leave just a little bit. So not every brush stroke is going to be perfect, but you might get lucky with one or two. You just never know. So you just got to put it on there, see what happens. It's all about being brave. You got to be very brave. Let's turn it this way now. Try that. Why not? I think that texture is already starting to show its benefits. It's starting to look like something, something that could be believable, something real. I'm 
I'm just grabbing some more yellow. Keep that color on the brush. This is just a good brush. We could use a sponge even. In fact, I'll show you how. Grab a sponge and just pick up that color. And just kind of dab on texture. Oh, maybe there's a couple things right there. Who knows? Take some more white. And they make good rocks too. Look at that texture we can put on that rock right there. Maybe there's some moss growing on it. So for me, it's all about just keep moving. Keep moving. Don't forget. It. Don't worry about it. If you make a mistake, forget about it. Move on, just keep moving. Fix it, let it dry, come back. Add some dark texture through here. So this is a really good, this is taking that foundation because this is not the end result. This is still, we're kind of laying the foundation, but this is taking that to a, a whole new level, a different step. It's gonna make things look even better once I finish. Wash that sponge off. Now we can, I think we're going to get into the stage now where, and I know you can see that you can start to see things taking shape. And I haven't done anything with the water yet, but we'll get there. Now there comes to a point where I'll probably just use a liner brush. And straight up, I'm going to work a couple hours. I might work an hour, maybe another two hours. And that's really where that level of realism comes in. Again, it just comes down to patience. Adding texture, being creative, and work. Just work, 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 keep going. Have fun with it. The key is you gotta enjoy it. That's the key. So a mountain might not be your thing. Maybe you got to paint something else. But if you don't love it, if you don't love painting this mountain scene, I would say there's your problem if you are struggling. But it's good to try things. Everything is worth a try. So I encourage you, you know, if you start something like this and you get to a point where you're not enjoying it, just do yourself a favor. Finish it. I promise. I promise you'll learn something from it. And that's really the most important thing because you can learn something, you can obviously get better next time. Painting does not have to be stressful. It's supposed to be fun-filled, entertaining. I just can't get enough of it. All right, so. Wash that brush again, so you can see I'm adding some flowers. If we take some white, I'm, losing, I'm trying to figure out what colors here are dry and whatnot. We got a big mess going. So let's take some white and some of this green gold. And before I let you go, and I'm gonna speed it up, I'm gonna have to speed it up here. I apologize, but before I let you go, going to end up starting to build some grass highlights. Maybe there's a couple bushes there. Small textures, little baby circle motions. I can spend a long time doing these too. I want to create like the light is coming down and really hitting right here and it's going to fade away as we get back further. So you'll see me build that light right around this area and then I'll start to fade it as we get back through here and at the same time as we get further back into here we're not going to have that texture quite 
as extremely, you know, we're not going to use those little swirl motions. We're going to more so just kind of sweep it. We want this texture to be appear to be a little further back, so we're not going to be able to see every blade of grass. But when we get close up through here, I do want to add some of that. Just like that. And I'll keep going and keep going and keep going. And it'll slowly build, and I know that you'll be able to see it build. And when we get to the water, the water is something that's very easy to do as well. Just got to look about, look for what's above. Whatever you're painting in the water, what's above it? And the reason I say that is because water reflects what's behind it, right? So well, there's a rock here. There's a rock there, and that could probably be darker. I'll take some more blue, a little more black. And so we've got a reflection of a rock right there. And I'll want to smooth that out, but we're just, again, we're just laying the foundation. I'll put some more right through here. Another reflection right in there. We'll also want to maybe take And in fact, you're probably looking at me like I'm crazy doing it with a liner brush. Well, I think I might be too. Probably switch to something that has a little more width to it. Like this quarter inch square brush, flat brush. So we can add some waves. We get back into there. We can pick up a more bluish color. Add some blue up through here. Tiny reflections, maybe just a hint of that river, that creek back in there. We can dull that down. We can glaze some blue over that. But I'll just poke at the river, same way. This is a super easy. I don't think you can go wrong with the river. Just get some of that color. Whatever's behind the river, just get some of that color right in there, and it'll turn out pretty good. No matter what. All right, so I'm going to keep speeding up, and I'm going to work on details, filling in all these little details, and then into the trees, and I think we'll have a completed painting.
All right, so we're getting to a point where I'm just about finished with the foreground. I like the detail that we've got going here. We kind of have an effect of like a light source passing over this area and hitting this area. Well, if we've got this light source coming in, uh, I want to show a source of light. And I know we know that that's going to be somewhere up in the sky up here, but let's exaggerate that. Let's put something right over the top of this area. What I'm going to do is take some white. Just got some white here. Let's just try with some white first. Just grab some white here. And I've got this round blender brush. Take my fingers. I'm going to just kind of push that around. Really blend that out, fan it out. Now that's kind of cool. I think we can do better. We can do more. Keep that going. Now I'm going to grab some primary cyan. I'm going to mix that in with the white. I'm going to do the same thing. Keep going. Now we don't have to use our fingers. We, we can. I can grab another one of these brushes, a dry brush. I can push that around too with a brush. So there's different ways to buff this this layer out. Okay, I think we can keep going with that. A little more through here. Oh, we're gonna need water. Get water on my brush. Keep that moving. It's gonna dry. I'm pushing pretty hard. All right, now we can just grab some more primary cyan. Basically, we're going to try to create a smooth blend. Grab some more white. Actually, let's grab, I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of red. I know I've got a crazy mess on my palette. Apologize about that. Okay, now we've got a little bit of red. See what that does? of a light pinkish color. You can put a little bit of that on the tops of this ridge too. Maybe some light that's just hitting the tops of these trees. I'm going to grab more white with a little more red. We can put some of this pink into the sky. While we're at it, I know I talked about doing something more to the sky. So we've got a tiny bit of blue mixed in with this pink color. And I'm just going to dull down this area of the sky over here. And by dulling that, we're going to make the highlights over here appear to be a little brighter. Grabbing some white now. I can keep playing with this forever. At some point, you got to call it quits. But you can see now we've got a glow starting to take shape. And if we let this dry, what we can do, and it may be getting close to being dry already, I'm just washing my brush over here. I'm just washing it in some water. Trying to get a lot of that paint off of there. In fact, I've got a new brush here. This is a same type of brush. This is just a dry one, clean one. 
dust of that off there. Okay. Just trying to make sure that's nice and clean. Now we can grab some of that white, maybe a teeny tiny bit of the pink, the red. Now we've got this light hitting down here, and I'll draw a line. So you want it going this way. And we're going to start lightly adding these sun rays. That's pretty cool, right? So now we can start to see these sun rays coming through. I've got a little water on my palette, just keep that flowing. We might grab some blue again, so it's got a little bit of a blue hue. Now that's pretty strong. Well, we can just fix that, just pushing that around with our finger, maybe a dry brush. But you just, it's a slow process building these tones. Don't go for it all at once, just build them slow, very slow. Very, 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 very slow. We can even glaze a little bit of color over the top. That can kind of look cool. Now we're gonna drag this one down even further. See how that's barely covering, just going over the top, but you're going to start to notice it. Same with right here. It's a tiny bit of color on the brush, but enough to do something. Now we've got some light rays. And we can keep going with that. Dip my finger in water, tap it on the palette just so we can pick up tiny bit of that water. Yeah, one more sun ray. I'm going for it. Right here. Look at that. How nice that turns out. So easy. Picking up some more red. I like that nice warm color. Ooh, that's really bright. Don't worry. I'm just going to put a tiny bit right there. Just going to put a tiny bit. And some of the texture of the canvas is showing through. That's all right. We can keep working on that to smooth that part out. Sometimes when you start to overwork it and the canvas texture starts to show through, you're just going to have to let it dry. Let it dry thoroughly and go back over the top and do the same thing and it'll start to smooth out. The, the texture of the canvas will start to disappear. It's a slow process. You're not going to get it in one shot most of the time anyways. Just like that, we've got some really nice light rays coming down. Very happy with it. I like it. We're going to be just about finished with our painting here. I really like how this turned out. I think I'm going to call that a completed painting. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are able to apply some of these techniques into your paintings as well. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and tag me with hashtag paint like a pro. I want to see what you guys are able to come up with. So be sure to connect with me on there. And of course, I auction off all the paintings I do here on the videos through my eBay. And that link can be found in the description below, along with a link to my website where you can find other prints and originals. And of course, I give away a free print, free, every week to one of my email subscribers. And you just have to click this card right up there. Be sure to sign up for that as well. And of course, like and share if you loved this video. I can't wait to see you guys next time on another episode of Paint Like a Pro. Yeah.